Today, Great.com talks with John Kurek, who's the Chief Director of Operations at the Chuck Norris Foundation, Kickstart Kids. And if you haven't heard of them, they are a nonprofit organization that teaches kids character through karate. And if you are new here, please press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app, because today we learn the positive impact that karate has on kids. Hello, John, and welcome to our podcast. Hey, Ryan. Thanks for having me, sir. No, thank you for being here. And I really look forward to asking you all about this amazing organization and just going a bit deeper into it and just, yeah, learning as much as we possibly can, not only for us, but for our listeners and viewers too. So thank you so much. So, John, so for me and anybody new here, what is the Chuck Norris Foundation and what is Kickstart Kids about? Uh, Well, thank you for asking. Thank you for having us. Um, Yes, uh, Mr. Norris had a dream. Uh, He grew up very poor in backwoods, Oklahoma, and had uh, had a he was single, single parent and household. And, um, you know, consequently, not having a father figure in the house, grew up very insecure. And you won't believe this, but he was very non-athletic. And so he suffered as as a child because of this. And it wasn't until he joined the Air Force and he got stationed over in Korea where he was able to start a martial art that was called Tong Sudo, which, if you translate, means the art of the knife hand. And he went to uh, obviously he went through the ranks. And um, what a lot of people don't know about Chuck Norris is he actually failed his first black belt test. And through perseverance, six months later, was able to attain the black belt by going back and retesting. Fast forward, he comes to the United States and um, starts a chain of karate schools up. And he has a a student and the student's name is Steve McQueen. Well, Steve McQueen is a famous actor. Um, And Steve McQueen looked to uh, Mr. Norris and refers to him as Chuck and says, hey, Chuck, you know, why don't you try acting? And, you know, Chuck's like, you know, no, you know, I don't think that's that's me. You know, I'm running my schools and things are looking pretty good. And so uh, long story short, Steve McQueen paid for his acting lessons to start him off. And obviously the the rest is history. We kind of know all his movies and then his, you know, long term uh, series, Walker, Texas Ranger. Well, through his fame, he got an invite to the White House. Uh, where President George Bush was in office at the time, senior. And, you know, they're sitting down and and George Bush asked Mr. Norris, hey, you know, you got money, you you got fame, you know, what do you want to do with your life? And so Mr. Norris, you know, had this, this dream and he was germinating this dream all along. And it was, man, you know, he grew up a certain way. And if he had martial arts when he was, you know, a single parent family household, and he wouldn't have grown up so insecure. And, you know, what it would have helped with his confidence. And he was like, well, I have this dream to, to implement martial arts inside middle schools as part of the curriculum, where kids can either take regular physical education class, or they can take a martial arts class in lieu of the, the regular gym class. And uh, President Bush says, well, that's a great idea. Why haven't you started that? And uh, he said, well, well, I did try it in California. I went to the school board and they said, well, you're crazy. You're not coming in here and teaching these, quote unquote, bad kids how to be able to fight even better. And they didn't understand the whole concept of what martial arts does and how it molds kids um, to be positive members of our community. And so President Bush looked at him and goes, well, you know, um, you know, I have some connections in my hometown of Houston. Is Houston okay? And Mr. Norris was like, well, hey, Houston's as good as any town. Let, you know, let's go do this. So President Bush launched us uh, inside of Houston. There was three schools in Houston, Texas, and one school in Galveston, Texas. And what they did was they put us in the roughest schools that they could find. And um, they pretty much felt, I think they thought we were going to fail. And to much of everyone's surprise, it really took off. So that's kind of a a synopsis of how we got started. Um, Would you like me to keep going, Ryan? If you if you want to, John, I just want to stop. Let's just stop there for a moment whilst whilst there's a little break. I I just want to add to that and just say uh, thank you for sharing that with us. And honestly, believe that 
sort of pain presents purpose. And obviously with Chuck Norris there, you say when he was growing up and he wished he would have had this type of thing. And then he goes on to creating it in his later life. So that is that's so wonderful to hear. So, yeah, John, if you if you want to keep going, please carry on. OK, so, you know, the, the, the powerful thing about martial arts, especially inside middle schools, is it attracts all different types of kids, all different types of races, cultures. You don't even see race. It's, you know, we're all in the same uniform. We're all wearing the same color belt. And, you know, you sweat together and you bond together and you're working together to try to attain a goal. You know, we appeal to uh so many different types. We appeal to boys. Half of our class is girls. And in some schools, it's more girls than it is boys. So I understand the stereotype a long time ago where karate was a guy thing and, you know, girls didn't do it well. It, it, it the Times have, have definitely changed where a lot of our classes are at least half half of girls. You know, we appeal to the athlete in the school because, you know, they're looking at us, wow, I would like this might enhance my my sports. We actually appeal to the the student that is real rough around the edges, um, even possible gang members, maybe possible kids that are going to go down the wrong path. And this attracts them to um, to be part of a a group that have like-minded students that are all goal oriented. Uh, and it seems like a lot of the kids that we attract are the kids that don't belong to anything. And they're looking to belong to something. The kid that's not really fitting in the band. He's not athletic. He's just kind of out there. A lot of the kids that you see across the nation kind of getting in trouble these days, um, maybe a polite way to say it, uh, we attract a lot of those types of kids. And we honestly feel that if we were nationwide, and that's kind of what our ultimate goal is, and if we could uh, really reach down and grab a lot of kids' hearts, you know, their heads will follow. And if we can instill the disciplines of philosophy of the martial arts that a lot of these young kids running off doing shootings and things like that um, might not happen. Mm, yeah, no. John, I totally agree with you there. And thank, I just want to say thank you so much for that in-depth um, pieces of wisdom that you shared with us there, because it's so true that a lot of children growing up, I believe, are just a bit lost and they need that guidance. So going on from that, what are some of the main reasons for, say, children lacking discipline and maybe misbehaving in schools? And how are you part of the solution there? Um, really good question, uh, Ryan. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's probably a lot of different answers. So I think uh, the structure of the family has changed over the years. So that's where that martial arts component kind of um, fits right on in because, and I have a lot of female instructors also. Um, and I point that out because we have a lot of female students and they're our most vulnerable right now. Um, so to see a positive female instructor up there running the class or even a, a positive male figure in their life, you know, having them strive towards um, a positive goal. And, you know, the idea, to be honest with you, Ryan, is not to get the students to black belt. You know, we uh, we pride ourselves on our karate and we want it to look strong. You know, we represent Chuck Norris. But the main goal, uh, the, the physical component is only scratching the surface on what we do. We have an in-depth uh, character development program that the child is put through. So we're using martial arts as the vehicle or the tool or the carrot that we dangle in front of them so that we can instill the character that is missing in today's um, youth. And how we've done that is uh, with my team, I have strategically aligned martial arts drills around character education words. So example, the word of the week or maybe even the month sometimes might be focus. And I have drills lined up where the instructor is constantly saying, focus, focus, focus. Well, the kids are having fun as they're drilling this word focus. And we have the same thing with determination, uh, loyalty, reaching goals, goal setting. And so throughout the whole year, those kids are hearing this character. Ed. Um, 
and we give out what we call honor stripes, you know, and, and to us, it might be silly. It's a colored paper, excuse me, a colored piece of tape that goes around a kid's belt. But what a child will do to get a blue stripe around their belt is crazy. And so, again, we'll use that as a vehicle or, or a tool to see how well they're doing in their other classes. So we'll send short um, questionnaires out to their other teachers wondering how they're doing in the classes. Well, this, this child is wanting to get this blue honor stripe around their belt. They'll do whatever they need to do. So what we've seen is better grades, higher graduation rates, less teen pregnancy less dr uh, drug and gang violence. And this has all been documented by Dr. Deborah Perry in the past, who's followed us since our inception. Wow, thank you, John, for sharing that with us. And that was also gonna be one of my next questions about the impact it's having on children's grades and attendin attendance levels. And it just goes to show that when it's sort of a, an incentive or a sort of competition about it, uh, anyone whether it's children or, or even adults they want to sort of commit themselves to achieving greater things so it's so nice to hear that it's, it's impacting the children in that way um so so since it's founded in 1992 how many children roughly have benefited from this program john uh, great question. Um, right now, we serve in our program 10,000 kids around the state of Texas. Those are the ones that are active every day in class. But we have graduated over 100,000 students that have came and received the benefits. In fact, um, one of Mr. Norris's dream was to go ahead and start this, but eventually he wanted to supply all of our students a job so they can learn this trade. When they're going through college, you have a trade that you've learned. You can do private lessons, maybe make some money while you're getting through college. And after that, if you want a job with Kickstart Kids, we're supplying. What I'm finding now is it, we have the turnover rate going. So obviously, I've been here for 30 years, but I, we've washed out a lot of the um, people that have started this and we've gained schools and our own students are running the programs now. So mm -hmm. it makes it really impactful because it did something for them and they know what it meant to them. And now they're trying to give back. Um, and pay it forward with students that are starting off, you know, maybe low income, single family, you know, uh, in, in really rough neighborhoods. So they identify with these kids and they're trying to give back and be a positive mentor in, in children's lives. Yeah, that's 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 beautiful to hear that it's, a, it's like a community feel and you've got the people that are training. I'm sure they would have wished they would have gone through this similar or same um, program when they were the same age so it's so nice to hear that and going on from that as well John what sort of skills and disciplines can these children uh, take into their adult lives and why is this important right 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 great question because like I stated earlier um, you know martial arts you know obviously it's important to us and we want to you know have really great looking karate but that's just scratching the surface we really want to develop good character uh, for our community and good character students um, so they can be, you know, they can contribute and be positive members of the, of society. Um, so what I mean by that is, you know, when they graduate from us, hopefully they can take, you know, the goal setting, the focus, the determination, um, the resiliency of going through a martial arts program, hopefully they're able to take that and apply it to their life. Um, another thing is, is we do have a lot of people that do make it to black belt. And so I don't want to discount earning that black belt because you just, uh, you reached a goal that takes five years, you know, a commitment for you to be able to uh, get something that you have, have set a goal on. And so when you can attain a black belt and that's a five-year goal, wow, you can go on and get your bachelor's. You can go on and get your master's. You've got that type of discipline to accomplish a black belt. 
you can apply it to life and accomplish anything you want. And that's what I've seen um, a lot of uh, students gain from attaining the black belt. You know, it, it's funny because the change is fast. The kids come in in the sixth grade and we, we typically focus on sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade. So in Texas, those are what they call the middle school years. And that, that, that's what we kind of focus on because we've seen a lot of things are geared towards the elementary child and a lot of things are geared towards the high school child. And this middle school stage is the forgotten stage. And those are where they're choosing their paths, their friends, which way they're going to go. And Kickstart Kids wants to be there and grab their heart then so that their head will follow um, and put them on the right path to try to be positive and successful in their life. Um, so they come in in the sixth grade um, and the change is fast. And what I mean by that is when you enter a, a karate classroom, you answer yes, sir, and no, sir, or ma'am, yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. There is no yeah, no. And so that's a forgotten thing nowadays. So when a principal comes in or another teacher and the instructor asks, hey, class, uh, is everyone feeling good today? As an example, and the whole class erupts with yes, sir, or yes, ma'am. The teachers and the principals are like, whoa. And the discipline that is, is displayed at the same time with everyone standing still, they'll come in and go, wow, you know, Mr. Kirk, you know, how, how do you get 50 kids just to stand there like that while you go and do whatever you need to do? And it's because of the structure of what karate um, does. And hopefully we're instilling that so it transfers over to their regular classroom. That's the goal. Mm, yeah, no, it it's, it's so, so great to hear that uh, the children are learning the discipline because everything in life is really about discipline. Like, whatever we want to do in life, we need to stay disciplined. And also you mentioned focus earlier. Like We need to stay focused on what we want to achieve. So, yeah, it's amazing that these kids are learning this at a very early age because then they will be able to take it into their future, say, careers and adult life. So. John, just going on to finish up, what, what, what is your vision for the future with Kickstart Kids? Uh, great question. You know, right now we are in 70 schools across the state of Texas. So we're in a lot of different districts um, and it's been a very powerful impact <clears throat> in the school district itself. The main goal is to kind of spread throughout the state of Texas and then use Texas as the beacon state so that when people are looking like, hey, why are they, why, what's so good about Texas? They can kind of track it back to hopefully they're looking at us and go, wow, they might be on to something. And then we can go state to state um, with Kickstart Kids. That's kind of the ultimate goal. But what we've tried to do is grow strategically and not spread ourselves out too thin. Um, so we'll try to grow two to three schools a year in each single district. Um, that, that seems to be kind of like the little magic number so that we don't get so spread out that we're watered down and we lose impact. So when a black belt comes on and he signs on to want to try to learn how to teach, and he's done all this training, he, he might even have taught inside uh, a dojo and hang come with some experience. We still put him on a whole year of learning the kickstart kids methodology of teaching um, where we make things where they're uh, what we call layered method of teaching. And, you know, just, I just want to say thank you so much. And by the sounds of it, you said you don't want to spread yourselves too thin. thin. So you want to uh, progress and build this bigger and better, but you obviously want to stay at that standard, that high level standard that you've got currently. So it is so great to hear that. And what can somebody do to help and what action steps can they take to be a part of the solution? And what action steps can they take to be a part of the solution? Right. Well, there are several things that we can do to, to help, um, you know, obviously I'm always looking for black belts because it seems like we're always growing. So if you are a black belt and you have experience, it sounds like it might be right down your alley. You get to do something that you love to do uh, and make impacts um, 
and change kids' lives, uh, please go to our website, kickstartkids.org, and you can go to employment. And that's one way of helping. Another way of helping, obviously, is there's no cost to the child. So what we do ask is, you know, 50 bucks um, at the beginning of the year. So pretty much they take martial arts for the $50. Now, that being said, we turn no child away. If the $50 is just uh, too too uh, much of a hardship, and then we do what we call as an in-kind. And we have donors that actually help out with this. So um, donations are always, you know, um, welcome. Um, our program a year costs $100,000 to run one program. Um you know, obviously we have to pay for the instructor. We got to pay for, you know, him have a, a decent livelihood. Um, we have to pay for the students. So it all equals up when you start talking about, you know, paper tabs and staples and pencils and everything um, to $100,000. So we're always looking for donations to kind of keep us up and healthy financially. Mm, no, that, that sounds so great to hear. And I'm sure for all of our viewers and listeners, they can reach out to you on your website. And if they want to donate, they obviously know where to donate now. So, John, I just want to wrap it up by saying thank you so much for being here and sharing your words with us today because I really, really enjoyed it. And Thank you, sir. Thank you. And for you listening, if you've enjoyed this episode, please press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app because that will show the algorithms that this is an important conversation so more people can have more people can learn how karate can have positive impact on children's futures. John, thank you so much. And I appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity.